Hello, this is Cindy Mazzaferro with Powerful Beyond Measure, and I am so excited to have two wonderful women today. One is an author of three books. Her name is Deborah Borgen, and her um, translator, may I say, or co-author is Mary Ann Rigg. So I'm so excited to talk to you, both of you, about these books, and I want to talk, give you a little bit of their bio, okay? So Deborah Borgen was raised and still lives in Norway. Deborah used her traumatic childhood, near-death experience during a C-section with a third child, and other struggles that she experienced in life to become an established expert in consciousness training. She has written three books, holds powerful workshops, and is featured on television, radio shows, and highly regarded as an expert that creates amazing results. Deborah has participated in scientific research on her life work, showing that her techniques and training leads to better balance between emotion and logic, resulting in fewer emotional explosions due to pent up emotions. And she is now in the process of proving her positive results in children. So welcome, how are you, Deborah? Fine, and thank you for the invitation. Great. And Marianne, let me tell you a little about Marianne. She was born and raised in Connecticut and then moved to Norway with her Norwegian husband. Fifteen years ago, she met up with Deborah, a spiritual teacher who had really impacted her life and improved her relationships and navigates her life better than ever before. It is as if the whole new world of possibility opened up, making it easier to help herself and others. Being fluent in Norwegian and English, Mary Ann was motivated to translate Deborah's work, her Magical Moments book, to English to help spread this work internationally. She has also translated all of Deborah's coursework, uh, material work for Deborah's unique mind, ESP, and conscious training to English, as well as the contents of the unique mind, ESP website and so welcome very much Marianne how are you thank you thank you great so just we are actually thing, just one little thing I'm not the co-author I, I translated the book yes, and I probably shouldn't I was trying to think of the right way to say that you're right okay. so she took Deborah's words and translated it from one language Norway Norwegian to English and um, how powerful is that is our book is now internationally available and um, worldwide correct that's right. Great. So we have some, um, we're going to talk about uh, Deborah's different books. We're going to really focus on one, and then we'll be able to actually show you the different, her other book covers as well. Do you want to show your book first of all, Deborah? Yes, I have it here. There it Great. And bring it real close to the camera if you could. Can you bring it closer? There you go. And talk a little louder if you can, Deborah, okay? Because we really want to hear what you're going to be saying. Yeah, anyway. So, Deborah. Tell us about what made you want to write this book to begin with. Oh, yeah. Um, I, it, the easy way was that I had uh, discovered uh, tools uh, for myself and then I wanted to share them. So that is the reason. But it goes way back because uh, it, it started already as a child. Uh, and uh, as you said, it was a uh, traumatic and difficult childhood. Uh, and my father, he was an al alcoholic. And uh, we know what that can do with children and leave some deep scar the scars. And um, so um, based on my childhood and what I experienced uh, near death, uh, I just have had to make this book. I mean, I wanted people to could to be able to use the tools that I use in my life in order to to have a, a good life and, and to help people and to to create a wonderful community together. So great. So thank you, Deborah. So we're gonna break that down a little bit because I know your story is so powerful. I know the audience is gonna want to hear about it. So can you, I know you have shared a little bit in your book, so I'm not asking something that's not publicly know, knowledge here. Can you share a little bit what happened in your childhood and how that impacted you emotionally and what was the mindset that you came away from with the, that traumatic experience? Yeah. 
uh, yeah, it's, um, uh, yeah, I think uh, uh, what I experienced was uh, my father, uh, uh, he, he uh, you know, he beat, uh, beat me uh, and there was a, a tough period uh, and uh, I was always afraid um, and um, yeah, and I also met uh, one uh, only young child. Uh, I had two rapes in my life, and uh, then I had a, a repeatedly sexual abuse by a doctor. And and it's like the people you want to trust, your parents and the doctor you have, you want to trust them, and then you just you you see and you you experience that you can't. Uh, so I I was uh, uh, closed down, or I was you know I kept to myself. I was uh, always scared, uh, and uh, I develop uh, ability to to sense the atmosphere around me, so I could be aware of uh, the mood of people. Uh, so I so I could you know go go very slow and be careful. Um, so, and I, I had no confidence. I had, uh, I mean, it was, uh, when I think about it now, I have peace with it now, but, but of course, uh, a child should have love and, and safety. And I think also this is a part of why I'm doing my work today. I have dedicated my life to this and I will do it as long as I'm here on earth. Mm -hmm. uh, so, because children, they should have a good life. Right. So that, thank you for sharing that. So, you know, having uh, rape and sexual encounters that were, of course, not appropriate as a child, you know, definitely impacts. And so many people are experiencing that, whether it's emotional abuse, physical abuse, um, mental abuse, you know, there's so much abuse out there. And, and like you said, even from a doctor here, you think it's safe, it wasn't safe. And, you know, I'm not sure if in Norway, you heard about the United States, but in the United States, the Olympic team, gymnastics teams in particular, there was an Olympic doctor who over years, I mean, we're talking like 25 years, actually molested over 100 um, Olympians, gymnastic Olympians, that were there having their physicals and stuff and was never um, brought to justice until just recently. So um, even doctors, uh, parents need to be aware of that they can be doing harm to our children. So we need to be aware of that situation. So thank you for sharing that. And, and I really believe, you know, with my book, Powerful Beyond Measure, and what I had happen in my life, my parents were divorced. So I had a loss of not having that safety, secure, fatherly figure in my life. And so we're all impacted. We all have a past. We all have a childhood. And we're all impacted. And that's not a negative thing. It's just what is. And it's our perception and mental um, understanding what we take away. Like you said, you felt uncomfortable, not as confident. There wasn't that trust factor. So these are things that you walked away from with your childhood. And so now I'm really excited. Let's jump into the next aspect of your life. Now you're an adult woman, you're married, you have two children, and you um, experience a near-death experience with your third child through the C-section. Can you tell us about that and what you experienced? Yeah, because uh, uh, at that time I was, uh, I was um, uh, already sick because uh, um, when you experience a lot of trauma and a lot of things, you, you just hit the wall. And I, I did that. And in that period, I should have my daughter. And then in this C-section, um, I, I, I was aware of the, uh, the surgery, what's going on. I saw my body, so I was up somewhere. Uh, and uh, for me, I... I am a very skeptical person of all those things. So when it happened to me, I was, hmm, what is this? <laughs> very questioning. I'm financial. I'm, I was very analytic person, you know. I never thought of, of these things at all. So I was, hmm, what's happening to me? And I could, it was very special because I could use my logic 
and I could see and I could feel. And for me, it was like, actually like coming home. It was a feeling of coming home. And it was a lot of love. Um, and it was a calm place. It was like, at last I was good enough and feeling good and was accepted. Um, and I thought that this feeling I want to have in my life. Uh, so if I'm surviving this, this is what I'm going to find out. Uh, to bring that calmness into life, to bring the love in life. And it was also like I got a, a, a plan of how humans could use our potential in order to make peace and have a good life. Beautiful. But, yeah, so it, it was, <laughs> it was, I'm sure, a short time uh, my brain was, uh, you know, not functioning, so it was dead, but, but I'm sure it was a short time, but I experienced a lot, experienced a lot. And uh, with that play, uh, this, this um, plan, I thought, oh, I'm going to do this, you know, and make people see all the potential we have and all the love and all the kindness and what we can do and how we function. So I, I, I was looking to go back in my body. Uh, and, and what I experienced was when I was back, it was like very blurry. So I actually used 24 years to find the equation that brought me to to this, this actually plan that I've got and, and the explanation on how humans are built and, and how we can use the potential. You know, I really love what you're saying because I think it's so, um, many people around the world are looking for something in their life. They're looking for an improved state of being, a happiness. We're all searching for something. And often it's not something you can say, I'm going to pick up a piece of paper. I'm going to get it today. It's, it's a continuum of life experiences. It's almost like you need to mature yourself and to understand to be able to bring that to, to bear, you know, to bring it to birth, if you will. And it's not just a turning of a doorknob and all of a sudden you get what you want. And I think that's important because even as you were having your child, you said that you were already sick. You know, there was a lot of internal things that were happening that you were still digesting from your childhood, from, from the emotional. I want to get into that part too, because I love the emotional component. And I speak about that energy that lives within us. So I, you and I both resonate very much on our wisdom and uh, how we had to even heal ourselves to be able to do the work we do. So it's so powerful. But one of the things, um, you know, which I think is so here great is here you had this near-death experience through the birth of your child. And I'm sure your child is born and, and is really has, um, she probably doesn't even, or I don't know if it's a girl or boy, but she probably has a very special plan that she needs to bring to this world because it was through her birth that you were also privy to this wonderful birthing of how to bring you to the state of peace and love and and comfort and joy within yourself. So I'm sure this child also holds a very important role in the world. Uh, what she said when she was a little girl, she said, mommy, I will take care of the animals and you can take care of the people. <laughs> oh. Well, that's very spiritual. That's great. Now, one of the things I read in one of your books is that went through your near-death experience that you um, talked about how humans have many unused resources within. And for me, this really resonated for me. And I wanted to ask you a little bit more about it because for me, I've always dreamt and, and from a very young girl that we all have this power within. And so when you say we have this unused resources within we're speaking the same language and i would love to hear what it is that you heard or experienced de during your near-death experience what were or are these unused resources that we hold within yeah and and, and uh that was uh what took me 24 years to find out because 
when I had the plan and I saw how we could uh, use our potential, uh, when I came back into my body, then it was, it, it was very blurry. So I had to uh, read uh, psychology, physiology and uh, Einstein, I, I read Arthur and Jung and all the, uh, the known uh, people who lived before us. Um, so I, I actually used 24 years in order to find out how we could open this uh, inner potential. And um, from my point of view, I, I was very interested in the brain. Um, because there's a certain part of the brain that we need to use to unlock something. And uh, when people work with meditation, uh, that do something. But I also saw that, ah, it doesn't give us all, you know. We, yeah, we can tap into something, but there's more. So, so um, uh, what I found was a way to train our brain uh, so that we could actually have the meditation level with eyes open. Mm. Uh, and then I also uh, made two techniques that I use in order to have this flow, to get the ideas, to get the wholeness, um, uh, and actually uh, that I physically uh, can, can do something. Not only, I also wondered why is it that people meditate and that is good and Ah, but the world does change. Why? What is missing? Mm -hmm. and, and I, I believe the missing part is that we can use our brain in a new way so that we can have the meditation levels, the deep levels, while we are, are awake. Uh, and, and actually, the, the, um, the um, scientists, uh, looked at this and and they said wow what are you doing so it's 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 like an active dynamic training I'm doing with people it's it's meditation but it's active and dynamic so that we we actually can <laughs> it's not so easy to explain in in a few minutes but but it, it will affect the hidden potential I mean I I had no, I thought I had no potential. And I, I was raised that I wasn't worthy. I couldn't do anything. So I shouldn't talk actually. <laughs> uh, but today I, I mean, I can do whatever I set my mind to. And by using my brain in a new way and actually the tools that I'm writing about in my books so people can oh, use them. Um, and then I see that I actually can can do whatever I like. That's and that is great for us. You know? It is great. Now, I'm going to come back to this in a second. I'm going to ask you to actually demonstrate one tool that you can do here live quickly to give our audience an opportunity to learn how to be awake and to kind of change that mindset, that capability of potential. But before we get there, I love... And I also use this metaphor, and I would love you to explain it to people, using the metaphor of the iceberg. Um, we all have a visual understanding of an iceberg. There's an aspect above the water and below the water. So really quickly, and then we'll get back to that exercise that you can maybe, maybe teach us on, on this video here. Um, tell us about the metaphor of the iceberg and how that relates to our mind. Okay, so uh, not to do it uh, very... Uh, uh, we'll have to do it quick uh, because if we look at an iceberg, the surface or that we see is is our conscious mind, and what's below it's our subconscious, and and there lies also all of our potential, but also stored memories from our childhood and from happenings in life, and um, and. What I want people to, I want people to access this, not, not that everything shall uh, up to the surface, but, but we need to change what stops us. 
And uh, we didn't, a few years ago, we didn't believe that we could change our past. Uh, and, and that is correct. We can't change the past, but, but, but we can change the feelings about the past. The, the past. And, uh, and, and I have the special techniques uh, that I use um, in my life in order to change the, the, the patterns of, of my brain. And in order to change and in order to get the, um, the change... Uh, uh, lasting? Lasting, yeah, thank you. Um, we need to tap into this uh, levels, the deeper levels. And then uh, when we are at the deeper level, we can change the patterns and then then we can get the change. Perfect. I, I just want to say to our audience, isn't um, Deborah just doing a fabulous job? She normally speaks in Norway and um, she is really very articulate doing an extremely job, good job with speaking English. And I appreciate that for the English listeners. And um, thank you for helping up Marianne. And that's why Marianne is also here. And here. <laughs> have a, a language problem with understanding my question too. So, and then what I love about the iceberg analogy here, which um, I often use as well, is that for me, the iceberg above the water is really present day. It's, it's our conscious thinking of what's going on presently. Yeah. And you see the iceberg. You, it's what's visible upon the surface, right? So it's what you see in your normal day life. What you see is happening is the iceberg. It's, yeah. it's there. And there is an aspect of the, what's happened in the past. So to me, the, the, the submerged part of the iceberg represents the past, but also as you define the potential of someone. So that's our future. So it's our past below the surface, then the present, and then comes back the future. And, and we can, you know, I think of the future as we can be our captain of our own ship, how we navigate the water. And it's the, the base of the iceberg that steers the present day, the top part of the um, iceberg into what we want to create. And so really imp um, evaluating and assessing our past memories and the energy and the emotion around them will help shape our potential for the future, which will eventually translate into the present day. Do you agree, Deborah? Yeah, yeah of course. It's the way I think as well. I can give yeah. you one example because... Great. Uh, I was really uh, afraid of uh, of uh, airplanes, so I didn't I didn't uh, go to holidays or vacations because I didn't uh, want to use the planes, the, the airplane. Yeah, uh, so I used my technique and I uh, looked into it uh, because I want to travel all the world and talk about this work, mm -hmm. and I want to help people. And I, you know, uh, and we are going to you uh, United States as well, so. But in order to do that, I had to take away this uh, old fear. So by using that technique, I could take away the fear of flying and then I could go. And, and this is what we can do. So when things stop us from doing the things we want in life, we can actually just go inside or go down in these uh, deep levels and then we can uh, turn it around and make make it some uh, yeah some of our oh, and a, cha a change you want the change to happen so that's a perfect segue thank you for sharing that story well so share with us a technique that would help you change those thought processes to allow you then to fly what would be a way you would teach your students in a workshop okay i have a workshop on two days and the first thing i have to do is to train the brain so in order, uh, in order for them to tap into this. Um, so, and therefore I wrote my book uh, to describe those two techniques mm -hmm. people can use. Uh, uh, and of course you can't use, you can't use them just after uh, listen to what it is. You have to train and I made a program in this book so that people can uh, actually train themselves um, maybe not as deep as in a class uh, where, we, where we do a training of the brain, but, but a lot of people have told me they have changed their life by reading the book and using the techniques from the book. 
Right. And it takes practice, like anything, to get better at it, whether it's just meditation, which, you know, often people say, well, I have struggled with meditation. It takes years to develop that, that oneness, that quietness to, to go inward, you know. So um, go ahead, Marianne. I just like to say right here that um, there's a basic uh, mental exercise or meditation that is used at the course, and that is available on the website, both in Norwegian and English. So people who want to use that uh, with the book can, can get the audio, download the audio mental exercise or meditation. Great. And what's that website, Marianne? You said you would, you would inform about it at the end. But no, it's, you can it's, say it uh, now. That's fine. Yeah. It's uniquemindesp.com. Uh, right, Deborah? Yeah. Yeah. uniquemindesp.com. Okay, right. gotcha. And, and when, when you first go in there, there's flags for the different countries. Okay. So then the person going in would need to choose the American or the Canadian or the United Kingdom flag to get English. Perfect. That's great. Um, are you able to, Deborah? Thank you, Marianne, for telling us that it was perfect timing. Deborah, are you able to actually take us through a technique, or is it really not applicable or appropriate to do in video? Real quick. Uh, it's not easy to take uh, people okay. through an exercise. That's okay. Uh, Twenty-five minutes. Yeah, so that's fine. We don't have that time. So I encourage everyone to go to her website and also to buy her book, Magical Moments. Um, and that will go through the process and, and it takes time. And I think we always, I know I always counsel my students and, and clients that I have that, you know, if it was so easy to change that energy, that emotion, that memory, like the switch of a light switch, we wouldn't be suffering so much in life. It takes time and you also have to practice and continue to, to use these techniques like Deborah has, like I have, many spiritual teachers out there are offering us to really create that change in patterning that we live in our life. And, and, it's, a, and it's a journey. It, it's to be experienced and to really fall in love with that journey, right, Deborah? That it doesn't just happen. It happens in perfect timing when you're ready to receive more and more in that process. Okay, but what I wanted was that uh, I know now with the research on my work that actually if it takes 20 hours to tap into this. Then you start to use your techniques and then it happens quite fairly quick. And this is all about the scientific that I've done to this uh, research. And there's uh, two articles done on, on this, um, uh, this, uh, this research work, Deborah's yeah. work, has been proven scientifically through electrical magnetic study that there is changes in the brain. I just wanted to help get that out. And I know Deborah is um, trying to get that message yeah. across. Okay. Go ahead, Deborah. Yeah, because uh, when we train the brain, it's easier for us to do the process of changing. And this is what I want to give to the world. Uh, it's a new way of using the brain. And yes, it's a process, always a life is a process, you know, but we can actually do it quicker than we thought before. And, and this is what I teach people. So it doesn't, you don't, you don't have to use the whole life in order to change. Uh, I have people in class and they change big, huge things after just weeks. So, and this is why I have been working for this for 30 years, because I want people to know that you don't have to use 30, 40 years in order to change something. Uh, we can actually change uh, very quickly. Uh, but yes, life is a process and we will develop all the time and all the way. I mean, I've used this work now for nearly 30 years myself and there is always things that pop up from the submerged uh, of the water underwater and whoops, then I have to work on something. So there will always be, but there are tools and way of training the brain that actually is easier. 
Uh, and this is so exciting. I, I really want people to understand that, you know, Deborah using her techniques and that might parallel other people's techniques, she's proven that you're impacting the different types of brain waves. We're not going to get into a scientific uh, lecture here about the different types of wavelengths, but it's proven that there, there is a healing and a shift of your mental um, processing. And that when that happens, that you're able to use those tools and techniques in your life in a more readily fashion. And like Deborah says, doesn't mean that you still won't have challenges in your life. Things pop up. You still got to use it and grow. And so I'd like to just, I'm sorry, go ahead, Deborah. If you have one minute, I can tell you about the, the last two years of my life. Um, sure. One minute for yeah. two years of life. Wow. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. One and a half years ago, uh, I suddenly, a Saturday, uh, a Saturday, I got a phone call that my mother uh, was in the hospital. Uh, and then on Monday, my brother went into hospital and he has ne never been ill before. Uh, and he, he had cancer and the spread to the brain. Mm. And my mother, she has Alzheimer's. So I had to, for the last year, just have full work then then follow my brother to the doctors and going through the therapies and all all things and he died now in january i'm sorry uh, uh, and my mother she still has alzheimer and but she's not here but her body is here still yeah. and these are things that we will meet in life and the most important thing for me is to say to people that we need to learn techniques so we can handle all, all the life gives us because this is what life is also. It's, it's terrible thing, it's dramatic things, uh, and it's also a, a lot of good things. And if I haven't been using these tools, I would never stand up. So, and th therefore I also use my life on this. I sold everything I had in order to do this research and really, you know, let people know about it because we, Oh, I, I can say how much I don't, I don't know what to uh, I know what you're saying Deborah because I love I love your work and I love what I'm doing too it's life changing it and you can hear the passion in Deborah you know it's a commitment and it's not something that she came here and said this is my curriculum this is my career it came upon her that she was guided spiritually that this is something she had to do had to bring this to the world and to it was so powerful it changed her life where she was emotionally um, desperate at times and you know fearful of life and and look at here she's this woman who has a voice who knows she's worthy knows she's important and knows and wants to bring this to other people's um, in their life to bring them joy so let's transition over to Mary and thank you for being here and I know I haven't had you be able to talk yet but I'd love to hear briefly about how you um, how your life has changed working so closely with Deborah, being at her workshops, reading her books, having to translate them. You kind of like consumed all this knowledge in many, many well, ways. Well, actually, I didn't have to. I didn't have to translate her book. I offered to do it. No, but I meant as you translated, doing oh, that, you consumed yeah. all this knowledge in many, many ways. Yeah. Oh, it was really it was a good review for me. But I've been um, a student of Deborah's for fifteen years. Um. I'll try to be short because I just saw something that said we had seven minutes left. Okay, great. Um, I went, what Deborah said the first time I was at one of her courses was, it really resonated with me because I, uh, sp um, spontaneously, sporadically through my life, I've lifted, listened to inner guidance and, um, and, and I've had a spontaneous experience of, sort of forgiving my father, um, which lifted a weight off my shoulders. This happened years before I met Deborah. But I remember that experience of thinking, there's no sense in hating him for the rest of my life. And then all of a sudden, I just felt like a big weight was lifted from me. And it made an impression on me. So later, when I went to Deborah's first course, and she started talking about the importance of forgiveness, it re resonated with me. Right. So I continued going to more and more courses because I, I wanted to really understand everything. And I just want to say quickly that two of the important things that I've gotten uh, out of her course is never point the finger of blame at anyone else. 
uh, it won't get us anywhere. Just frustrated. And, uh, we, and, and she's taught me to, we have to go within and find out um, what is it in my past that made that trigger for me, that made me react that way. And we can fix that. And then amazingly, it fixes the relationship too with the other person. Without that's me expecting a, that's a wonderful that's pain. a wonderful thing to comment about exactly yeah so that has really helped my um, my relationships and and she gives us concrete techniques to use while we are in our our um, deep level uh, we can we can imagine that we're talking to this other person and having a nice dialogue with them and that brings me to the next thing is that she taught me the importance of forgiveness mm -hmm. and that resonated with me already on the first course um, because of the experience I had already had with, with my dad. So learning to forgive has very, been a very important part of my, my development, my self-development with Deborah. Thank for, you for sharing that. That's so true. And I had to also forgive my father for leaving us and my family. So I had, is, a, I had a similar experience to yours. Yeah. Isn't it amazing? It really is. It's just amazing. So I guess we do need to kind of wrap this up. I try to keep them within 45 minutes and I think we've been in, on even longer. So um, thank you all for being here. And Mary, uh, Deborah, do you have anything, last parting words of wisdom that you want to tell the listeners? I just want them to to read the book and use the tools and and live their life and uh, not look back so much, but yes. to stay in the in the in the now and uh, enjoy. Yeah. So. Beautiful. Now hold up your book one more time and tell everyone where they can get your book worldwide. I assume on Amazon. And Marianne, can you also hold up her other two books for me? Yep. As she holds that up and. Marianne, so you can find your books available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble. Well, actually, this one, is on, this one isn't published in English yet. Okay. And this one just came out in in um, last fall, and it's not in English yet either. Great, but they'll be coming out soon, and that, one of them is actually a workbook for a, a tutorial to help people in the school system, or parents can use it. I heard. So that's really great. And I encourage everyone to check out their website. I'm sure there'll be everything there that they need to know. And also that powerful meditation. I know I will too. And again, that's, uh, what's the website again, Marian? Unique Mind ESP dot com. Great. And it's well, spelled in English. You know, oh, that's even good. Okay, yeah. perfect. Well, thank you all for being here. And once again, I thank the listeners and viewers for taking time to hear these powerful authors and speakers I bring to you. And you're here for a reason. I encourage you all to go to her website, Deborah's website, and check out her book, check out the reviews, and better yet, buy it for yourself, a friend, and um, allow that inner healing to occur and allow your life to be powerful limitless, um, beyond measure. So thank you all again, and much luck to both of you. Thank you, Cindy. This has been a nice experience. Great. Thanks, Deborah. Much luck to you and your advanced uh, research into the youth and, and improvements there as well. Thank you, and good luck to you as well. And thank you for having me on board. You're welcome. Take care, ladies. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.